right, this is take two on this one. Um, I tried to video this on the way in this morning, and for some reason the video didn't take, so we're driving home now, and we're going to talk about how do we progress weights, um, adding load to the bar, etc, etc. Um, now, this question comes from Shawnee, also known as Signal or to give his full title, Captain Super Signal, who is and has been a member of my Kettleheads GS team, Gunnaboy Sport team, for several years now. Um, one of the hardest training, most consistent clients, athletes, I've ever met. Um, so we're going to start with, and this actually is uh, relevant to something that came up in, in conversation today during our lunchtime session, progressing kettlebells. Progressing kettlebells can be slow. Now, we've got two things going on here. You've got Shawnee in kettlebell sport, and you've got the lunchtime lad who's using kettlebells for general strength and conditioning. The methods we use for training and the outcomes of such training are different. Kettlebell sport, if you're not familiar with it, it's the sport of kettlebell lifting, just like Olympic lifting is the sport of barbell lifting, as is powerlifting, I suppose. Um, the sport of kettlebell lifting is, it's a power endurance sport. They like to tell you it's strength power endurance. Power endurance. Using ballistic, explosive lifts, done repeatedly for a given period of time. And the person who wins is the person lifting in your bodyweight category, lifting the same size bell as you, it's the guy who lifts the most reps during that time period. Depending on the event, the competition, it can be anything from five minutes to up to an hour. Um, the standard competition is 10 minutes, which is cruel in a lot of ways. But anyway, so you're progressing kettlebell sport, your you're move up the kettlebell weight categories is going to take a while, because at each stage you're not just dealing with a new weight, but now you're trying to get that new weight and take it from something that's heavy to something that is endurance. Um, do you know what I mean? So, for example, our questioner today, question provider, Shawnee, when he joined me, he was struggling. He was getting his ass kicked by a pair of 16 kilo kettlebells. Now, he's preparing to compete with a pair of 24 kilo kettlebells. Been a bit of a grind getting there. First off, we have to get the 16s relatively comfortable so that he could lift them consistently to a standard. The standard is not blanket across the board, it's very much individual based. Um, but once he was lifting them to a good standard, we started introducing the 20 kilo kettlebells. And the way we introduced them is it's like dipping a toe in the water. You lift them once. You lift them for one set. You lift them for a longer set. You lift them for multiple short sets. And we introduce them bit by bit, kind of slowly, okay? Because it's not just maximal strength. We're not, not interested in lifting them once. We want to lift them in such a manner that we can use perfect form and that is repeatable. Not in a way that's going to compromise our structure in any way. 
the ideal is if somebody couldn't see the kettlebells and saw you lift they wouldn't know what size kettlebell you're lifting it's your technique should be identical your movement should be identical so Sean he going with the 16s doing really really well gets to a standard so we introduce the 20s at the end of his warm-up so you warm up through the, the bell weights start introducing the, the 20s so he's hitting them every warm-up then we decide to train them a little bit once he's they're looking good they're comfortable they're lifted with control every rep is sharp it's crisp maybe get up to 10 reps now we can start looking at introducing them into a training set so we start maybe doing pyramids or we start doing short sets um, whereby he can introduce them gradually with fairly low volume and so on and so on and so on until eventually the 20s take over from the 16s then the same with the 24s and so on and so on and so on it's a slow slow process because bear in mind if you're doing the jerk with two kettlebells going from a pair of 16s to a pair of 20s that's an eight kilogram increase and it's not just one rep it could be 80 reps it could be 70 it's high double figures um, it's a big ask now take the other lad go to Jer who was in at lunchtime and holy shit what is going on here the road is nearly coming to a standstill no it stopped interesting anyway so Jer's in for strength conditioning general strength conditioning he plays fair to say he trains in uh, MMA so he's doing the combat sports he's not interested in kettlebell sports he's using kettlebells as a way to better prepare his body for the rigors of the sport and to improve help improve his performance but he's also a bit of a meathead aren't we all and he said today why is it we progress through the kettlebell weights for example, on a, a front squat, much slower than we do. There's the 13 minute congestion in one kilometer. You are still on the fastest route. I hope you heard that. Um, there's 13 minutes congestion in one kilometer. Still on the fastest route because it's the only route. Um, so Jer's goals Again, it's still strength, power, endurance. Combat sports are still strength, power, endurance. Um, but in the gym, we tend not to worry so much about the endurance part of it because, you know, combat sports training is very, very cardio. Very, very cardio. Um, so he's noticing with a kettlebell, you tend not to go up the weights nearly as fast as you would with a barbell. But then, as we mentioned, going from a 16 to a 20 is a four kilo jump. That's a big jump. Um, in terms of percentage, four kilos is four, eight, 12, 16, yeah. It's a quarter, it's a 25% increase in load 25% all right that's a hell of a lot you use a barbell you've got a couple things going on one you can lock it in so much tighter so it's almost part of your structure two you you rack it for a squat front or back it is almost on your midline your center of gravity kettlebells unless you've got it set on top of your shoulder always changes your center of balance your center of mass especially with a front squat the bell out in front where there's one or two bells that mass is out in front 
which will assist you with a front squat to help you keep um, up my window a little bit, it's very warm and we're going slow um, hopefully you don't get too much traffic noise so the weight out in front the requirement of the core to stabilize the hips to sit back etc so the mechanics are a little more tricky just as a barbell back squat you'll lift more weight than you will a barbell front squat even with the same muscle activation you throw that into a kettlebell front squat two bells you're going to lift less weight again but it feels as hard i have read studies um, rather i've read research reviews not the research itself because wow fair play to you scientists guys who go through the research all the time and really fair play to your research reviewers that do the hard work for us um, but the research review has shown that the muscle activation through the lower body from a front squat and a back squat is largely the same even though the front squat has less weight involved I would love to see that replicated with kettlebell front squat just to see, just to see. I would theorize that, yeah, it's gotta be about the same. The big difference I notice with doing double kettlebell front squat over a barbell front squat is that it's almost always the torso or the shoulders that give out before the legs. Um, just the difficulty holding them there. So if you've got abs of steel a really strong core you should be able to front squat pretty pretty heavy you might get the legs to give out first but that's why with kettlebells we do a lot of single leg work um, we really can't overload the lower body sufficiently with double leg work in my opinion not using kettlebells um, so progression with the kettlebell it's largely due to the shape of the thing the fact that it ch changes your center of gravity the leverage the, the positioning is not quite as favorable it does sit very much outside your base support particularly on something like a squat uh, conversely on a press on overhead press it in many many cases people find it's more comfortable than dumbbell or a barbell but you're still dealing with the large jumps and kettlebells. Um, kettlebells are now more common and you are getting smaller sizes, smaller increments, sort of one and two kilo increments. Um, we also have the magnetic weights that you can stick on, which are one and two kilo increments. So it's not always a four kilo jump. Um, sure, back when I started, it was the old, old school. You got 16, you got 24, you got 32. That's your lot. So you have to take a volume-based approach. You master the 16 kilo. And I mean master it. I mean, you press that bugger yeah, up to starting with a low volume. You gradually build, 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 build. Um, back when I was training with the 16, it was... Um, using the ladder you have one rep left one rep right two left two right three left three right that's it then you start back at one do that for three rounds build it up to five rounds then add a rung to the ladder from three reps you go to four reps all the way until you get five rounds of ladders up to five all right add that up and a three rep ladder it's a total of six reps one plus two plus three Okay, six reps. Do three rounds of that. You've got 18 reps in total. That's your volume. All right, that's not excessive by any means. By the time you finish, you've got a ladder up to five, which is five plus four, nine, plus three, plus two is 14, plus another one is 15. Um, that's looking rough. 15, you do five rounds of that. That's a hell of a lot of reps, isn't it? A hell of a lot of reps. Did I do that maths right? Three, six, ten, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Um, five rounds of that. Five fifteens. Thirty, sixty, seventy-five reps. So you're building 
that 16 kilo from what did we say at the start 18 18 reps through to 75 reps it's a big volume increase by the time you've hit your 75 your five ladders up to five you're ready for the 24 for 18 reps by the time you get that up to the the, the, the big numbers you're ready for the 32 it bloody works as well bloody works ladder training is one of the simplest simplest strength protocols I've ever come across especially for a fixed weight um, and a fixed weight would be a kettlebell it could be body weight so things like a pull up a one arm push up etc um, pistol squats all these kind of things or if I've never done it with a deadlift, but I would presume if you're struggling with a 100 kilo deadlift, struggling to progress, presumably you could do the exact same thing with that. Um, just not change the weight until you hit your five ladders of five. That would be 75 deadlifts. That's a lot of deadlifts. What other programs for strength are really good for progressing? With the barbell work, Jim Wendler's 531. Again, very, very simple. This is an intensity based program rather than a volume based. So, week one, after, of course, your, your ramp up sets, you do three sets of five. Your last set is always as many as possible, but a minimum of five. following week the weight's a little bit heavier but you're doing sets of three last set of course is more reps the week after you do a set of five you increase the weight for a set of three and you increase the weight for a set of one or more reps week four is a back off a deload week five you start over again with a slight increase slow and steady same as the ladder protocol slow and steady but you're now, you're loading heavier, you're using more weight with less reps. You're loading heavier. Um, doesn't work so well with kettlebells, with it being a fixed weight, works well, really well with the barbell, whereby you can make really small adjustments. You can add a kilo to a barbell, you can add two kilos to a barbell. You know, tiny little adjustments. Um, A lovely protocol that works both with the fixed weight, the kettlebell, body weight, and with the barbell. And don't forget barbells and the advantage of barbell is they're so highly adjustable. The disadvantage of a barbell is they're so highly adjustable. Same with the kettlebell, it's fixed. Large intervals between the weights, fixed object, which means yeah, your progress is slow, but you have to show that you mastered that progress before you go on. Um, a program that kind of works with all of the above is anything volume-based. So the three to five method and the EDT method, um, escalating density training. Escalating density is not a. It, you will get stronger, but that's not not what the program is about. That's unfair. You will get stronger, you will build muscle, and that's really what it's more about. It's a muscle building program. Um, in all the years I've trained people, the guys that have changed their body the fastest have all been on very, very simple EDT programs with very, very slight dietary training, dietary adjustments. EDT works, people. How does it work? You take a block of time, 15 to 20 minutes. You take two exercises that are complementary but non-competing. So a deadlift and a bench press, a squat and a military press, um, an upper body push, an upper body pull. You get the idea. And you superset the two of them 
sub-maximal sets so you never ever push to failure and you go back and forth at your own pace until the buzzer goes off to tell you to stop and you tot up how many reps you've done in total how many sets per um, how many reps per set is irrelevant it's only the total volume all right the final number so you your 30 reps your 35 reps whatever that's all that matters um, your f next time you repeat that workout you're looking to get at least one rep more so if you did 30 you look to get 31 32 all right if you're smart and you start easy the first few increments are quite good all right um, once you've got a given percentage usually about 10 percent more in the rep count can be up to 20 percent once you've increased your rep count that's when you increase the weight you start over again um, it gets pretty intense it does get pretty intense what I like with it is if you've got somebody who's reasonably deconditioned it's very controllable in that it's self-correcting it's very self-leveling so you can start somebody 15 minutes with very very light exercises uh, very very low load exercises they'll bang out dozens of reps you might get 50 60 reps and it's very conditioning orientated at that sort of volume you know the heart rates up they're getting that conditioning and it just helps them prepare for it later and then each time you make an increase they're still getting very high reps until eventually we start getting into the strength part of it or we can use it as assistance work after a strength block one of my favorite training programs I've ever done um, was using 531 as my barbell strength block following that with an EDT set for my assistance work uh, we're moving we're moving My current training though is a program I give to a lot of people. Three to five. Three to five reps for three to five sets. You start with three sets of three, you build it up to three sets of five, then you build that up to five sets of five. How simple. Once you top out, you start back at three sets of three. Very similar to the ladder training, isn't it? It's volume based training. Works with kettlebells, works with barbells, because you're sticking with the same weight and you're really building a solid foundation with that weight. And that's what people sometimes miss when they're just doing the big barbell moves, constantly adding weight, is they're, they're not laying a solid foundation unless they're doing their assistance work right. Their assistance work is what cements it all in. Um, I've seen people get strong fast, or well, strong fast, using the barbell stuff, and then very, very quickly lose that strength because it's not been cemented in. Volume cements in progress. That's why I love volume-based approaches. Not just because volume, uh, sorry, high-level technique with a gradual increase in volume is very much the way I grew up doing martial arts, but it's also safe because you're not adding weight, adding weight, adding weight, adding weight, constantly chasing numbers, you're slowly, slowly building it. So my recommendation is always increase volume, reduce volume, increase weight. Increase volume, reduce the volume, increase weight. And this is progress. It might not feel like it for the first few weeks. You do three sets of three, and you're like, that was easy. You know, you do a ladder, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you go, well, that took no time at all that was easy um, you do an EDT program and your first week or so you're deliberately taking it easy so you can build a foundation um, you know there's no harm in that and then slowly 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 it builds up builds up builds up builds up till you hit the top numbers where all of a sudden it's not so easy but then you retest yourself and there is progress is this the only way to train? No. So I like people to train, yes. 
Has this worked for a lot of people over a lot of years? Damn right. But did I invent any of this? Hell no. I learned all this. Um, yeah, there's protocols I've experimented with, developed, customized myself, but then you know, a couple of years down the line, you read an article, somebody else is doing the same bloody thing. Um, progression is not rocket science. Progress comes, and if you look at everything we've talked about, pro progress isn't just adding load to the bar, um, getting a heavier kettlebell. Progress is also doing more reps with the same weight. It's also doing the same volume with the same weight, but in less time. Um, these are all ways to progress. In terms of kettlebell sport, where it's a sport of lifting kettlebells, your technique is progress. This is one thing we've spent a huge amount of time with, um, with Signal. In order to get those 20s really dialed in, we've spent a huge amount of time with technique massive amount of time. We've readjusted technique because the light, the heavier weights require better technique if you're going to lift them for higher volume. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's answered, answered the question, how do we progress? When is, how do we know when to progress? Um, the short answer is when you've achieved a particular standard, then you decide which element you want to progress. Oh, key point before we sign off. You can only progress one thing at a time. You can't increase volume and load at the same time. Yeah. You can't increase the weight and do more reps. It, it's just not going to work. Just as... What are you doing, son? Just as... You can't... I knew you were going to do that, you knob. Um, just as you can't be trying to lift faster and do more volume you know two two training goals together not gonna happen not gonna happen all right look to own the load that you're using all right own it then increase it then own that then increase it make haste slowly who said that Shay my old Kenpo instructor used to say Make haste slowly. And if you do that, you will be fine. You will be training for a lot of years. You will make progress for a lot of years. You'll do well. You will do well. Alrighty. That's how we make progress. That's how we know about the progress. That's how we know when to make progress. Don't forget as well. Rest is important. Take your back weeks. Stepping backwards to go forward is always a good point.